Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out of the range with a very cool piece of Cold War history. In front of me, I have a semi-automatic version of the UK VZ-59 that was manufactured in Czechoslovakia before they became the Czech Republic. However, the gun continues on in service within the Czech Republic, but when they joined NATO in 1999, they converted them from 762 by 54 r which this gun is chambered in, to 308 or 762 by 51 So today we're gonna to take a deep dive into this little gun, talk about it, um, how rare it was, but how robust it is, and take it apart, show you how it works on the inside, all sorts of good stuff. It's a very neat reproduction that I picked up from Atlantic Firearms several years ago. Uh, it's manufactured by Mark Homar. They still make a version of this, more or less a modernized version of this. This is a true classic military uh, you know, version of it with the wood furniture and things like that. So let's start off shooting it. We have some Wolf ammunition. We already have the belt loaded, round chambered. And let's start this video off with a bang, shall we? I knocked my target over, <laughs> 100 yards. Had to go to work on the 150 yard target because the 100 yard target fell over. And that's the power of the 762 by 54 r Let's take a closer look at the UK 59. We would like to thank our friends at Big Daddy Unlimited for helping to make this and other videos possible. If you'd like to help us out, swing by the BDU website and just for 99 cents, you can try out their service for one month. And they're basically like the Sam's Club of the online world. So check them out. If you would like to stay a member, go by militaryarms.org. There's a big link right at the top of the website and you can stay a member for 20% off every month going forward. So please check them out. So our UK-59 knocked this bad boy over. You can see the trench that has been cut here from how many rounds we've fired at targets that we've had setting here. And uh, this target just looks like it fell into its own trench being pushed back by the 54R. And so we're gonna have to straddle that trench again, angle it towards our shooting table. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to fill this in. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. The fact that it's cut that kind of a trough from us using it. These targets, these challenge targets take an absolute beating. We're not easy on them whatsoever, but they hold up. Loading the gun is super simple. You have a tab right up here that's in front of your rear sight. You push that with your thumb and it'll just pop open. And there you have it. Here's your feed tray. This is a push through weapon. It does not pull the round backwards. So you wanna make sure that you have the, what you would say, sunny side down. You want the rounds down, you want the link on top. Set the link in there like this without the rounds fully seated yet. I'm just gonna set the links in there so I can close the top cover. Otherwise it's very difficult to close that top cover. Now you can pull on the belt until it stops. And once it stops, that first round is ready to be picked up. There is a lever over here on the other side of the gun that you have to depress. When you depress that lever with your thumb, you can then push forward with the pistol grip, draw the bolt to the rear, and it just snapped home and it chambered a live round. The gun is now ready to fire. You wanna make sure with these semi-automatics that you leave the gun on fire when you're charging the weapon. If you put it on safe and charge the weapon, you can damage or break the safety or other components of the gun. So it's really important to remember that you check to make sure the gun's on fire when you charge the weapon. All right, so it should have a round in there. Let's go ahead and assume the position. See if we can knock over our man size at 100 yards again. Now, the safety is back here. It's a, it's a cross block type safety. I'm gonna leave it on fire. Have a V-notch rear post front and a very nasty trigger. This is about as fast as I can fire the gun with its heavy trigger. hot brass. It ejects straight down where the PKM kind of throws it out to the left onto your supporting elbow. This throws the brass straight down out of the bottom. And I think I had a malfunction. <laughs> All right, let's clear that malfunction. Huh, interesting. Did it not pick up around? 
yeah, it just didn't pick up around. All right. To keep things like that from happening, it's best to have an ammo can, which I don't have out here. I have a big one, but it's kind of a pain in the rear. All right, here we go. But that was about as fast as I could fire it. All right, let's try that again. I think maybe I broke something there, maybe. Oh no. There we go. All right. Is that it? Yep, that's it. All right. Let's go over the features of the UK 59 semi automatic would be machine gun. Let's start off in the rear here. We have a flip up piece here that's meant to be used when you're firing in the prone position to keep the stock of the weapon in your shoulder. The full auto counterpart of this machine gun would fire around seven to 800 rounds per minute, so it'd be very controllable because it weighs over 20 pounds. Has a wooden stock, comes up to its machined receiver, and we have mounting points in various spots on the gun so it can be mounted into tripods and other uh, types of devices to hold the gun. We have the takedown screws here in the rear, and if you move forward, here's a little flap. You can see if I push down on it, it actually pushes the trigger. But when you pull the trigger on the UK-59, it's attached to a trap door on the bottom, and you'll see the trap door open when you pull the, the trigger. So as long as that trigger's to the back, this trap door is going to stay open. And then when you release the trigger, it closes the gun, so it's completely sealed up. Very well thought out in that regard. The rear sight is an odd arrangement, but it's very... Uh, nice if you know the gun's accurate and the, that's due in part to its you know all uh, machine construction but also it has pretty darn good sights for a general purpose machine gun you can adjust the elevation and the windage with knobs so the rear end uh, it, you're supposed to zero it using the front sight which is adjustable for elevation and then all the way down would be your closest range setting you have range markers moving up which is, uh, again, really nice and just folds out of the way. We have port covers on all sides. So on this side, you have a port cover that you can push down when there's not a belt in the weapon to keep crud out. On the opposite side of the gun, there's a cover for where the non-disintegrating link will come out of the, the, uh, the gun as you fire. So you can seal the gun up. The top cover, very short. Unlike a lot of guns like the SAW or the M60, where the whole top end of the gun flips up, this is more like the Negev, but this predates the Negev, and that it has a very small top cover. Inside, you can see the feed mechanism, the bolt. Very, very simple design. This is also how you take your barrel out, which we'll talk more about when we disassemble the gun. So you lay the rounds in here, close the top cover, or just pull the rounds through, and it starts firing from a non-disintegrating belt. Now this belt is a push through design, unlike the PKM, which pulls the round rearward out of the belt. Uh, this pushes the round through and the link itself is an integral part of the feeding system. It helps guide the round into the chamber of the UK-59, but it is not compatible with other guns like the PKM. Moving forward, we have that quick change barrel that I was talking about by simply lifting up the top cover, rotating it, and pulling the barrel off. We'll show that again later. We have a long stroke gas piston and a two position gas regulator that's in this block. And one of the unique features about the gun is the handle. It can perform many different functions. So right now uh, it's kind of out of the way. I could use it like this, hold it as, as a, if I'm firing, you know, if, if I had it slung and I wanted to fire it from the hip or whatever, I can put it up like that. I can rotate it around. It'll lock into this position so I can hold it like this as well. If you rotate it around, it'll go to the other side and there it just acts as a carrying handle for the gun or for barrel removal when the gun uh, is hot and you want to swap out the barrel. So it's, it's a multi-function device, which is actually pretty neat in its design. Up here, we have that front sight I was talking about, which is adjustable for elevation, a cone, flash suppressor, and then a bipod, which folds and locks in that position. Again, the weapon weighs over 20 pounds. It's not a light weapon, but on full auto, 
It would be very gentle to, uh, in terms of recoil as compared to lighter machine guns. They have a faster cyclic rate like the MG3. Uh, so it's, it's a very, very nice, pleasant shooting firearm. I have fired them on full auto, unfortunately, because of our stupid NFA laws and the Hughes Amendment and Reagan and the NRA. This gun can never be a fully automatic. So, does it take Glock magazines? No, it takes non-disintegrating link belts. Does it 80s hip fire? Let's find out. <laughs> I'd say it absolutely does. Field stripping the UK-59 is fairly straightforward. Now keep in mind, anytime you take a fully automatic weapon that's belt fed and convert it to semi-automatic use, you're gonna add extra components to the gun, sometimes increasing the complexity of the disassembly and reassembly of the firearm, and the UK-59 is no different. However, I will say the semi-automatic conversion on this rifle is uh, very well done, quite well thought out, and quite elegant in design. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure the weapon's uh, clear. So I'm gonna open up the feed tray cover. I'm going to hit the release lever here on, on the pistol grip, which allows that pistol grip to go forward. And this is just like the full auto version. So I'm gonna release it, pull it, push it all the way forward so it grabs that bolt and carrier, pull it slightly to the rear. I can see inside that there's no case in the chamber, but don't stick your finger in there because this thing will bite the end of your finger off. Pull the charging handle or the pistol grip at this point all the way to the rear until it snaps home. If there were a belt in here, now it will strip it around and put it in the chamber. The gun would be ready to fire, but we're checking to make sure it's clear. There's nothing in there. Now I'm going to pull the trigger, release the striker. Now I've released all the spring tension back here that I can, so it makes disassembly a little bit easier, a lot easier. Okay, so now we know the gun is clear. To take <clears throat> the buttstock off, you have two screws on either side, and I do have to pull it into my shoulder a little bit because there's still some spring tension in there. Set those aside so that they're not lost. And then the stock and the grip and all that good stuff will come out. There's the stock. There's the grip. Now I can take the bolt out, the striker is going to fall out first. I'm going to hold it like this. The striker will fall out into my hand. And now the bolt can be helped along. You're sticking your finger on the underside there, unlocking it. And there's the bolt and carrier. And now let's take the barrel out. This is super cool. This rifle uh, has very quick change barrel capabilities. All you have to do, even when the gun's assembled, if you're gonna change the barrel, like if it were in a machine gun configuration because the barrel's hot, all you have to do is open the feed tray cover, rotate it to the right that far, and then the barrel just comes right out of the receiver. So that's how easy it is to change the barrel in the field when you're trying to uh, swap out a hot barrel. So the bolt and carrier right here, you can see the bolt has a locking piece that tilts down into a locking recess and then that's how it unlocks. So it's a very simple design. All these metal components are polished to the point where they almost feel like they're lubricated even when they're dry. So the, the quality of manufacture is extremely high. All right, bolt and carrier. This is your trigger group, the release that allows you to release the pistol grip to go forward to grab the bolt to charge the weapon. This is your striker assembly. The striker, 
will hit the firing pin like that. It goes slams forward and your firing pin is right there by my index finger. So you can see how the striker, this block acts as a firing or as a hammer, if you will. Okay. That's an added piece. This rod in the middle is what drives the striker. So on the bottom, this is your recoil spring. This is what pushes your bolt home for firing. This is what pushes your striker. So there's a hole cut through the striker. It rides over the recoil spring and moves back and forth. So it will be hold, held to the rear by the sear. When you pull the trigger, the striker is released to go forward and it's being powered by this rod and spring assembly. This whole assembly is part of the striker system. This big spring here is what the bolt's gonna whap into, and this is more or less a recoil buffer. So that gives you an idea of how the UK-59 uh, comes apart and how it operates. It's a very simple, robust machine gun. If you take a look at the receiver, it's machined out of a solid piece of steel, and it's been said that this thing has a service life of well over a million rounds. So unlike count its counterparts like the PKM, which has a stamped receiver, uh, which will stretch and bend and eventually uh, go bad, this receiver will probably outlive me, if, even if it were a machine gun. Pretty impressive. All right, let's put it back together. I'm gonna go ahead and put the barrel back on first. Put the barrel in, rotate the top cover up. It's locked in place. And headspace and everything is already set. I'm gonna take the bolt and carrier, slide that in from the rear. Like that. Push it all the way forward until it locks. Take the striker assembly. Striker simply sets in like that. Push that all the way forward. Take your grip, slide the grip in. And now we got to line up the springs and plungers and such. All right, and then hold it forward by pulling it into your shoulder. Put your retaining screws back in the rear end. And that completes your assembly and disassembly or disassembly and reassembly of the firearm. That's it. Very simple in design. Loading the belt's pretty easily done. The belt is again, non-disintegrating. You can see coils of steel holding each individual link together. You wanna to try to avoid damaging one of the links in the belt because it would cause the gun to stall out when it hits that damaged link. There's a little tab on the end of the belt. Take the rim of the case of the live round, put it on that tab, push down there, and push on the front of the cartridge, and it will lay right down into the belt for you. So there's no need for a belt loading tool like on other belt-fed type firearms. It's actually easy to do without the assistance of a tool. When you take a fully automatic firearm like this rifle and convert it to semi-automatic, inherent problems are gonna crop up and the guns won't be as reliable as their full auto military counterparts. It's just the nature of trying to convert something that was purposely built to be a full auto than trying to convert it into a semi-auto and working within the confines of the space that you have with the gun already that was not intended to be a semi-automatic. And so you're gonna run into the occasional malfunction no matter how good the conversion is. This is a very well done conversion, but this afternoon we've been getting some light primer strikes with the Wolf ammunition. Now that could just be a function of the ammunition. But the point being is, you be prepared to clear some, some malfunctions. These aren't go to war weapons. I wouldn't wanna defend myself in the apocalypse with one of these. They're more or less just for fun. Let's go ahead and load her up. I hope she proves me wrong.
There you go. I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this beautiful belt-fed weapon from the Cold War era. It continues on in military service in the Czech Republic. Again, it's just been rechambered to 762 by 51 NATO, but it's a pretty obscure belt-fed version from the Cold War. Uh, not a whole lot of countries used it, and it's not all that common out there, but it is well-made and loved by the countries that do use it, including the Czech Republic. If you want to pick up a version like this, which is a military version with the wood furniture, you're probably going to have to go to a place like Gun Broker because they're no longer being manufactured, from my understanding, by Markomar. They're manufacturing a modernized version of it with the polymer furniture, and you can swing by Atlantic Firearms, where I picked this one up many years ago, and see if they have some of the modernized versions in stock, and they'll still be in 762 by 54 r Cool guns, cool pieces of histories, uh, history, and a lot of fun to shoot. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. We're supported by you, our viewing audience. There's a link in the video description below. Give it a click and consider supporting us on Patreon. Right here on YouTube, just underneath the video player, there's a little join button. Give that join button a click and consider supporting us right here on YouTube. And last but not least, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. All right, we started this video off with a bang. Let's end it with a bang. Gosh, what a beautiful gun. Thanks for watching, guys.